Francis Ford Coppola's 1972 picture The Godfather is considered by many not just the best gangster film ever made, but quite possibly THE best film ever made. Such is the quality of the film that it works on so many levels. A viscero, entertaining piece of fiction, a stark character study, a film that has plot elements that everybody can relate to in some fashion, beautifully crafted and impeccably acted, and a picture that allegedly inspired and influenced the mob world as much as it itself was influenced by the underworld, and even its production had heavy influence from the mob. The movie follows Don Vito Corleone, the head of the most powerful of the five New York crime families, after he is subjected to an assassination attempt. Perhaps in part inspired by Shakespeare's King Lear, the movie follows the ageing Vito looking to transfer control of his empire to his eldest son Sonny, but with Sonny eventually killed and the dim-witted Fredo not up to the task, Michael Corleone emerges as the unlikely successor to his father, and he proves to be just as Machiavellian, shrewd and cunning as his father, and even more cold and ruthless. Though the film is a fictional story, it dips its toes into the real history of the mob, as does its two sequels. For example, there really were five powerful New York mob families who exerted immense influence and control in the world of business, politics and the authorities. Individual characters like Don Vito himself are based on real life historical figures such as mob boss Frank Costello, as are the likes of the singer Johnny Fontaine allegedly modelled on Frank Sinatra. Hyman Roth from the second film is based on Jewish gangster Maya Lansky, right down to his failed attempt to live in Israel. And the whole story with the mobsters controlling casinos in Cuba and being thrown out of the country after its revolution has its basis in true life history. Frank Pentangeli and his beef with the Rizzo brothers, where he denies them territory, is thought to be based on Joseph Profacci and his war with the Gallo brothers, and Pentangeli testifying against Michael after thinking Michael tried to have him killed is based on the Valachi trial, where Joseph Valachi testified against the mob after he thought mob boss Vito Genovese was out to get him. Even the third film interweaves its fictional story with real life events, such as the death of Pope John Paul I and the papal banking scandal of the 80s. One of the most fascinating supporting characters in the first film is Mo Green, the Jewish mobster who literally storms his way into the film near the end of the movie in a meeting with Michael, storms back out and completely steals the scene he is in. Aside from his death later on, Green is in the movie for only one scene but definitely leaves his mark. Part of the narrative of the film at this point is to have Michael's enemies and us as the audience underestimate him so it makes sense for someone like Green to be loud, commanding and overbearing, which actor Alex Rocco did superbly. Green was a casino owner and gangster who, if we dip our toes into the Godfather novel, is thought to be a former executioner for Murder Incorporated, the enforcement arm of the Mafia. He is credited with the development of Las Vegas into a gambling haven and money-making machine for the mob, and in the second film his mentor Hyman Roth declares he built Las Vegas. Though arrogant, loud and having a big mouth, Green agrees to take on Don Vito's son Fredo under his wing during a war between the Corleones and the Five Families, with the West Coast Don, Molinari, guaranteeing Fredo's safety. Vito is thought to have bankrolled Green's early Vegas business ventures, playing a key part in the creation of Vegas, and when we first meet Fredo after he's sent out to Vegas, he is completely transformed, clearly having been influenced by Green and the Vegas lifestyle. However, Michael Corleone, and in the book his father to an even greater extent, disapprove of Fredo's lifestyle, and also of Green for slapping Fredo around, publicly humiliating a Corleone family member for banging cocktail waitresses two at a time. Green is incensed when Michael makes an offer to buy out Moe's interest in the casino as part of the Corleone's move to Nevada. Green flies off the handle, telling Michael that the Corleones don't have the power to muscle him out anymore, and implies the only reason they are moving out to Vegas is because the other families are chasing them out. He further insults the new Don of the Corleones by declaring he made his bones when Michael was going out with cheerleaders. Plus, Michael is undermined by Fredo's comments defending Green, 
So some heavy insults thrown, but Green is punished for his words and for not stepping aside. In the novel, Green is killed by Michael's enforcer Al Neri. In the film, he is murdered by being shot through the eye during a massage by an unknown Corleone assassin as part of the series of slaughters that the film climaxes with. Green's legacy is even felt in the movie sequel, as his death is a primary reason why Hyman Roth tries to have Michael killed. There's many interesting subtexts to Mo Green, such as him mentioning he talked to Barzini and he could get a deal with him where he would be able to keep his casinos. It shows just how weak Mo thinks the Corleones have become when, even though he has Fredo under his wing, he is in contact with the Corleones' enemies. Green enters the room and talks up the food, the women and the drink, but he himself pushes away the drink he is offered. Rather than be a gracious host, as he ostensibly appears to be, it seems Green himself is sharp and business orientated, but perhaps is used to dealing with men easily influenced by vices, like Fredo, who he thinks he can then assert dominance over. Michael is completely undistracted by the temptations, which may have irked Green as he was used to others showing him their hand and Fredo pulling out Green's chair while Mo straightens his tie and sits down will not have gone unnoticed by Michael. His tone of voice when talking about being able to keep his casinos could be seen as that of someone on the ropes, not to mention the insecurities implied by immediately blowing up after Michael makes his offer. And there may be real world reasons for this because Green is largely based on Bugsy Siegel. Benjamin Siegel was nicknamed Bugsy by other gang members for his notorious temper. Just as Roth was childhood friends with Green, Maya Lansky was friends with Siegel, and like the character based on him, Bugsy was a prominent figure of the Real Life Murder Inc. Former a bootlegger, after prohibition ended Bugsy turned to gambling, travelling to Las Vegas where he handled and financed some of the original casinos, being a key developer of the Flamingo Hotel and assuming control of its construction after the original developer ran out of money. Siegel has something of a reputation for creating Las Vegas. The 1991 film that bears his name for example has Bugsy having an epiphany in the middle of the desert regarding the creation of Vegas, and though this may have been largely exaggerated, Bugsy clearly had a hand in the early Vegas. However, when Bugsy's Flamingo Hotel opened, the reception was poor and there were technical difficulties, leading to a second reopening about three months later. However, by this point, Bugsy's mob partners, whose money had been used for the casinos, became convinced that around one million of the hotel's construction budget had been stolen by either him or his girlfriend. Siegel was shot and killed by a sniper, being hit many times, including two to the head. It is thought that literally the day after he was shot, mob members walked straight into the hotel and assumed control. There are various theories as to why Siegel was shot, with perhaps the most popular that his exuberant lifestyle and spending habits, plus the potential theft, was discussed in a meeting between the heads of the National Crime Syndicate, which concluded with a contract on Siegel's life, with Maya Lansky reluctantly agreeing. The suggestion that Siegel was stealing money is actually referenced in Mo Green's scene with Michael, when Green says, you think I'm skimming off the top? And of course the poor earnings of Green's restaurant are also referenced by Michael. When you take Siegel's history into account, it makes sense that Green would act the way he did, if we can assume his backstory is the same as Siegel's. Even on top of his temperamental nature, Green would have likely been in a highly paranoid state, concerned that the mob thought he had stolen their money and they were not getting their just returns from his underperforming casinos. Thus, he talked to Barzini and was assured of a deal where he keeps control of his casino interests. And then, this kid Michael has the audacity to come along and try to buy him out of the world he helped create, at a time where his family is powerless and running from New York. It makes sense to throw his lot in with Barzini over the ill and ageing Vito, but, like so many others have done, Green underestimated the power and cunning of Michael Corleone.
So I hope you enjoyed this video, subscribe and check out the channel for more videos like it, such as a breakdown of Don Fanucci I did a while back, where the hidden truth behind him is exposed. Before we finish, I just want to thank my patrons, Andre Millington and Nicholas Curtis, and also my channel members, the new on Goam24, Rikers, and Michael Awatwi. Thanks for watching.